Greetings and welcome to this video worship experience for Reformation Sunday. As we recall the start of a reform movement by Martin Luther and the good news that we are justified by grace through faith. In addition, the COVID-19 pandemic continues to surround us. So we urge you to continue to wear face masks, wash your hands, practice physical distance, and shelter in place so that we, together with our neighbors, can stay well and save lives, which is our Christian witness and service. Rooted in the past and growing in the future, the church must always be reformed in order to live out the love of Christ in an ever-changing world. We celebrate the good news of God's grace, that Jesus Christ sets us free every day to do this life transforming work. Trusting in the freedom given to us in baptism, we pray for the church that Christians will unite more fully in worship and mission. Also on this Reformation Sunday, October 25, Peace Lutheran Church will resume in-person worship at 10 a.m. Also on this same Sunday, we will dedicate financial pledges in a parking lot worship service and lunch at 11.30 a.m. Contact the church office to register for both of these in-person worship experiences. If you would like to receive a financial pledge card, contact the church office. During this video worship experience, we're not able to receive an offering. Financial offerings can be sent through the mail, electronically, or online on the Peace Lutheran Church website. If you would like to be a sponsor of these worship, video worship experiences, contact the church office. We now move to a time for confession and forgiveness. When we remember our need to die to sin and to rise with Christ, which is the promise of baptism. Sin permeates us and the world, which separates us from God and from one another. In dealing with sin, Jesus generously offers us love, reconciliation, forgiveness, and new life. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We now offer a time of silence for reflection and confession. This would be a good time to press that pause button below the video screen. When you complete your time of silence and reflection and confession, press the play button below the video screen. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Greetings. The first reading today is from Jeremiah 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God <clears throat> and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel for this Reformation Sunday, according to John, the eighth chapter. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered Jesus, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, who meets us as our loving Creator, as Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior, and as Holy Spirit, who gathers and inspires us for mission and ministry. Amen. We're now in the midst of the autumn season. At this time, we anticipate rain. Crops are being harvested. Children are now back in school. We're in preparations for winter. We look forward to Thanksgiving, and we are in the midst of the high school and college football seasons. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has postponed the California high school football season and has messed up the college football season. However, in spite of the COVID-19 pandemic, many universities are playing football and are inviting alumni to homecoming. Many activities are planned around homecoming to demonstrate school spirit, to build relationships, to show off the university, and to show support for the university. And I would guess that many of us have participated in homecoming at a high school or at a university. The other thing I remember about homecoming is implied in its name. It's a time when graduates, the alumni, come home to their alma mater to support their school, to cheer on the football team, to honor fellow alumni, to catch up with favorite teachers, to check out present students, to share memories, to connect with friends, and to remember their roots as graduates of this school. Homecoming is a time to come home. Today is Reformation Sunday. For Lutheran Christians, Reformation Sunday is like homecoming. Today we come to worship. We recall our Lutheran roots. We remember Martin Luther. We remember that on October 31, 1517, Martin Luther nailed 95 theses, which, are, which were 95 debating points on the door of the castle church at Wittenberg in Germany, which initiated the Reformation. Through these 95 theses, Luther questioned the sale of indulgences and sought to debate this practice because he opposed the practice of selling indulgences as a way to buy one's salvation. Luther wanted to reform the church of his time, to move away from indulgences and to focus instead on Jesus Christ. As Lutherans, we remember that we follow in Luther's footsteps and therefore we are a part of a Christian reform movement. As Lutheran Christians, we also remember that we are saved by God's grace as expressed in the person of Jesus Christ and through Jesus' death on a cross and his rising from the dead. On this Reformation Sunday, we remember something even more fundamental. Will Thompson, a hymn writer and composer, expressed it in this way. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. 
Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O sinner, come home. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. On this Reformation Sunday, we're reminded that we're sinners. In other words, we're imperfect people. We all mess up. We fall short of the glory of God. We do the things we should not do. We don't even do the things we should do. We forget about God, and there are often times we aren't attentive to God. We even at times turn away from God. Broken relationships are a consequence of sin. Denial works hand in hand with sin. We're caught up and enmeshed in the human condition we know and experience as sin. Sin is all the things and stuff in our lives that separate us from God and from each other. There's no escaping sin. We alone can't deal with sin and overcome sin. We are slaves of sin. In the face of sin, where do we turn? Where is our help to come? Martin Luther calls us to turn to God. We need God's help to break the bonds of sin to free us from sin. God has sent a champion to be on our side when we face and deal with sin. God's champion is Jesus Christ. Through God's love for us, through Jesus' cross and resurrection, God provides a way through sin and moves us beyond sin, frees us from sin. In other words, when dealing with sin, God calls us to come home. The invitation to come home is always available from God. God wants us to turn to God, knowing that God's help is always available. And the term we use for coming home would be that word, repent, come home. A way to return to God is to go home to God, is to confess our sins to God, and to trust in God's mercy, love, and forgiveness. This is why we offer a time of confession and forgiveness at Sunday worship. As a pastor, I have the wonderful privilege of proclaiming God's forgiveness to you. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Being forgiven by God through Jesus Christ is the good news of this Reformation Sunday and of every day of our lives. God loves us so much that God forgives us. God wants to be in relationship with us. So God's forgiveness is available to us every day of our lives. And nothing, I want to emphasize that, nothing can separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. As a result of God's forgiveness, we all together become recovering sinners, and we're asked to be participants in the addiction group for sinners known as the church. I can say, my name is Bill Wong, and I'm a recovering sinner. As disciples of Jesus Christ, daily we die to sin and rise with Christ. As a result of coming home and being forgiven, have you noticed that God sends us back out into the world around us. 
Like homecoming at any school, people gather and then they scatter to represent their school. And the same is for us. We come home to church and then we go back out into the world. However, there's a difference for us. God's love and God's forgiveness changes us. We have been changed. We have been transformed to be a new creation, to be a sign of God's kingdom, to be leaven and light for the world. We've been freed of that sin so that we can go out as free people to share that good news and that freedom changes us and transforms us. In other words, we are part of God's reform movement for the world. When we go out from here, we can be God's presence in the world. We are God's hands and feet in the world. God's work, our hands. People see the difference God makes in us, and we, and we in turn can be a difference for other people. When we go into the surrounding world, we can be expressions of God's love, of God's joy, of God's justice, of God's forgiveness, of God's hope, and of God's peace in the world and among the people we meet. God changes us so that we can be a catalyst for change in the world. We are able to give food to hungry people because God calls us to do so. We are able to offer a helping hand to people, and we can also help people to learn to read and become literate. We can be advocates for legislation, and there's all sorts of legislation, both in Sacramento and in Washington, D.C., that we can be advocates for. We can help a refugee or an immigrant to become a part of our community and of our neighborhood. We can be a catalyst for re reconciliation, and in this time of great division, we are people who are needed for reconciliation and to help people work through the divisions that separate us. We can welcome people who are different than us. We don't want to be a homogeneous community. We want to be a diverse community of all the people who are around us. We can work against hate, racism, and violence for, by building relationships with all people. These are some of the ways that we can be a catalyst for change. We can be part of God's reform movement for this world. God also changes Peace Lutheran Church so that this congregation can be a sign of God's presence in this particular community. Mahatma Gandhi stated, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. And we have been empowered to do that through Jesus Christ. Martin Luther proclaimed to us that every one of us is a little Christ for our neighbors. We are a part of a reform movement initiated by Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, every one of us can make a difference in this world. At this point, you and I know that sin continues to be alive and well in the world around us and among us. However, don't worry about falling short when it comes to sin. Don't worry about falling short when it comes to changing ourselves or changing the world. When we fall short, Jesus keeps calling us to come home. Jesus welcomes us with open arms, forgives us, changes us. And you know what happens next? Jesus then sends us back out into the world so that we can be Jesus' hands and feet in the world. Daily, daily we die to sin and we rise with Christ. And therefore, the reform movement continues in us and through us to the world. God's kingdom marches on into the world. Christ is our home, and Jesus calls us daily to come home. This is the good news of this Reformation Sunday and every day of our lives. Amen.
Together, let us confess the faith that we share by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind, especially our wildfires and the severe weather problems that have affected many states. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking. Help us listen and treat others with respect. Calm our hearts in this difficult time in history and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to de debt, chronic pain, lack of work, and addiction. May God grant peace and comfort for those who are ill, especially Betty, Caroline, Doris, Crystal, Carol, Bob, Forrester, and David. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have renamed, that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown in truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in this worship service. We are Peace Lutheran Church in Grass Valley, California, and we are so happy that you have joined us. We want you to know that God's grace is free. God loves you no matter where you are at in your life, no matter how you feel about yourself. Grace is free to you and God loves you. Go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God.